So let's talk now about the different types and sources of error that we can encounter. Um, in terms of types of errors, and remember that errors are uh, the differences between the measured value and the true value, there's two major types of errors. One is random errors. Random errors are statistical. So what that means is that um, they're randomly occurring um, in, in any direction. So they're, they're equally likely in equally likely in either direction. So they can bring the value um, higher or lower than the true value. Um, but what we know about random errors is that you can reduce the the random error by increasing the number of measurements. So they can be reduced through additional measurements. And this is what gets back to that uh, discussion of precision. Um, so the random errors we can remove, we can um, decrease by, by making more measurements, by making a more precise measurement. The other type of error, and I've mentioned this um, already before, um, are systematic errors. So systematic errors um, are consistently in the same direction. So if, uh, if we think of the example um, that I talked about before, which was uh, the accurate versus precise measurement. Um, if we have a precise measurement that is not um, that does not include the the true value in um, in in the, the the margin of error or in its uncertainty interval, um, then that means there's some effect that is driving the measurement away from the true value, and that's a systematic error. And no matter how many measurements we, we make, we will not get rid of that system systematic error. So um, additional measurements, additional measurements do not reduce these errors. So we'll have to figure out another way of determining them. Um, or getting them under control or correcting for these kind of effects, right? So those are the, the two types of errors, random errors and systematic errors, where random errors, we can make more measurements and um, reduce the random errors, but systematic errors, we cannot reduce them by making more measurements. So what are the sources? And this is an, an incomplete list, um, sources of error. Um, so, and, and I'll try to, to indicate whether they're um, random or systematic or whether they could be both. Um, so one common source of error is um, an incomplete definition. An incomplete definition could be, um, what's, the, what's the length, what's the size of your foot? Um, do you mean from, from the heel to the, to the tip of my my big toe, or do you mean from the left side to the right side? Um, do you mean the average size between all of my toes? Um, so the definition is just not precise enough. And so different people could reasonably measure um, a foot in a different way and end up with a different, um, a different answer. And so some of them um, might be larger, some of them might be smaller. In that case, this would be a random source of error. But it's possible that the definition um, is such that uh, most of the time you would actually measure a smaller value or most of the time you would measure a larger value. So in that case, it could also be a systematic um, source of error. So um, another example is measuring a length of a piece of metal. Um, you know, if you don't specify at what temperature and at what pressure and under what conditions um, this, uh, this measurement has to be done then uh, different people will get different uh, different measurements. If you tell me to measure the speed of sound, then you will have to tell me at what temperature. 
Um, is this at zero degrees C um, or is it at room temperature um, or is it even at, uh, you know, um, fr uh, uh, frost temperatures? So that's an incomplete definition. Uh, a next example of a source of error is, um, and this is actually somewhat related, is, is failure to account for a factor. So this could be ignoring um, air resistance in, uh, in, in um, a uh, gravitational free fall experiment. If you ignore air resistance, you'll make a systematic error because you will always measure um, a difference that will always go into the same direction, in the same direction. Um, same thing, ignoring the Earth's magnetic field um, would be another example of a, uh, a failure to account for a factor. Um, another example are environmental factors. Again, somewhat related. So environmental factors, which you might not be able to control, um, could therefore, ha therefore have a random or a systematic effect on uh, your measurement. So you, again, you'll be making a, uh, an error if you don't take into account environmental factors. So one example that we have in, in particle physics is that sometimes the environmental air pressure, um, essentially the weather, uh, has an effect on the efficiencies of our detectors. So we have to correct some of our results um, knowing what the air pressure was on that particular day. We have resolution. So resolution is, um, is, is a, a random source of error, but it is what you would get if you're trying to measure with the wrong device. For example, let's try your measure, let's say you're measuring small distances, but all you have is, is a meter stick and the shortest distances that are indicated in the, um, in, on the scale of the meter stick are millimeters. Um, so you would not be able to measure pretty, you would not be able to measure much better than a millimeter, which is the resolution of your meter stick. Um, a fifth source is calibration errors. So, um, uh, for example, if you're measuring something with a uh, an, an electronic scale, um, there is at some point a conversion from a voltage to uh, weight units. Um, and that conversion has to be taken from a calibration measurement. So, if there's a mistake in that calibration, essentially the, the multiplicative factor that turns the voltage into a weight, then this will have an impact on every measurement you do after, um, based on that wrong calibration. So this will be, and it will always be in the same direction even. So this is going to be a systematic error. Um, and in fact, in this case, it will have a, a linear effect on the measured quantities. If you have a a larger weight that you're trying to measure, the error will be, in absolute terms, will be bigger for the larger weight than for a small weight because it's it's a problem with the multiplication factor that goes from voltage to um, weight. Uh, a related error is a zero offset error. Uh, so this example here could be um, calipers. If, uh, if you have calipers and um, you press the jaws together and you don't read zero, um, then there's going to be, again, a systematic error that you make um, because you're not starting at zero when you expect to, uh, to measure zero. And of course, when you're uh, measuring any distance, you will always have that zero offset error that you will make. Um, another example relevant to some of the labs is um, background rates. So let's say you're counting um, gamma rays that are arriving through uh, on, on a, a geiger muller um, tube. If, uh, if you turn off any, or if you remove any gamma ray sources, you will still have background radiation. So if you assume that there is no background radiation, then you're actually making a zero offset error. Um, so ignoring background count rates is an example of a zero offset error. Um, physical variations is another um, 
common source of error. It's essentially um, assuming that all parts that you measure are identical when they are in fact not. Um, so uh, um, if, uh, if you were assuming that, uh, let's say you're making, making widgets and you're trying to measure widgets, you assume that they're always identical, but it turns out they're not. So on individual, if you're trying to come up with a, an, an average of everything that you measured, and you assume that that is the size for all of your widgets, um, that will be an error because the, there are physical variations between each of the widgets that uh, might cause it to have a different, um, a different size. So this will be also a random error. Um, then some other ones to keep in mind, um, parallax or um, even this is closely related to the, the meniscus level of um, uh, in, in a graduated uh, a graduated cylinder. Um, so if you have a, um, an, an indicator that's in front or a needle that's in front of a scale on a dial on an analog meter, um, regard, if you look at this from the left or a little bit from the right, the needle will appear in a different um, place in front of uh, the scale. So um, same thing with the meniscus. If you look at, uh, at this from an angle above or below the liquid level, it will appear to be at a different point in the graduated cylinder. So you have to be consistent in how you, um, how you read your, your needles on a scale or how you read the meniscus levels on a liquid. Otherwise, you'll make systematic errors. If you always look from the left or if you always look from the right, or of course, if you don't care and you do it once one way and another time the other way, um, you'll introduce a random error. Um, other uns, uh, other types of error are, are instrument drift. Um, so a common instrument instrument drift is you turn on um, a, a, a measurement device um, and it's still cold. If it's electric, if it is still cold, um, the piece of equipment it will measure one value, and then as the equipment warms up, um, it will start to measure different values. So again, that will introduce a systematic error in your measurements. Um, and then the last one is a hysteresis effect. So this is where the history of what you've measured affects the current measurement. So the previous measurement affects the current measurement. Um, so this will also be a systematic effect. Um, one example here is um, a contamination in a probe. If you, uh, um, if you're, let's say, doing some chemistry and you don't rinse out um, the needle that you're using to, to uh, take a, a, to measure or to, uh, to, to, to take a sample from, um, from a solution, then um, you'll still have some solution from the previous sample in there, uh, and so the measurement, the previous sample, will actually affect the current sample, and you'll uh, make a systematic um, error again. Okay, so those are some types of sources of errors, um, and I've indicated here whether they're random or systematic errors. Um, so the random errors, as a reminder, are the ones where we can make multiple measurements and the uncertainty will go down. But systematic errors, no matter um, how many measurements we take, the uncertainty will not go down and they are systematic effects that always go um, in the same direction.